Great, thank you so much, Christina. Now, it is my pleasure to briefly open this event and introduce our opening speaker, Ms. Gertrude Oforirwa Fefawame. Uh, Getty is a leading global advocate working intersectionally on the rights of persons with disabilities and the rights of women and gender diverse people. She currently serves as the global advocacy manager at Sight Savers as the chair of the United Nations Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, and is a member of the Inclusive Generation Equality Collective, one of the co-hosts for today's event, in which capacity she joins us today. Uh, now, Getty was having a few technical difficulties a moment ago, and I'm hoping those have been resolved and she's able to come on. Um, Getty, if you are there, can you come on now? Okay, it appears that Getty's uh, still having some uh, technical difficulties and we're not able to hear her. I'm hoping those can get resolved and we can hear her important intervention later on in today's event. With that in mind, let me give you just a brief overview of what we plan to cover today in our event, Transforming Feminist Spaces for Accessibility and Inclusion. We are first gonna hear about a group called the Inclusive Generation Equality Collective, um, a group of feminists with disabilities and allies who've been advocating collectively in feminist spaces for inclusion and rights at the intersection of gender and disability. We'll then hear about an initiative of that group called the Feminist Accessibility Protocol, a groundbreaking set of 13 commitments that ask feminist actors to take steps to ensure that decision-making spaces and convenings are accessible to and inclusive of feminists with disabilities. Then it's our great pleasure, and I'm very excited that we have with us today, Women Deliver, which was the very first group to sign on to the Feminist Accessibility Protocol, and will be speaking to us about how they went about implementing the protocol and the recent Women Deliver 2023 conference, which took place just this past July in Rwanda. And then we'll finally hear from one of the Inclusive Generation Equality Collective members who attended that conference about what the experience was like for women with disabilities on the ground in that space um, that really proactively sought to ensure accessibility and inclusion. Now, I know many people in the room have their own experiences to share, their own reflections on creating accessible and inclusive feminist spaces and their, own, their questions for our Inclusive Generation Equality members today, as well as for Women Deliver and the other folks who are participating in the room. We're planning to offer plenty of time for those questions at the end of the event. And in the meantime, we hope you'll engage in the chat and in other spaces um, around this event. If you're following us online and wanna connect with others who are following the event, please feel free to use the hashtags Commit to Access and Feminist Accessibility Protocol. And also we'll help you use the hashtags Generation Equality and SDG Summit to connect this conversation to the larger global conversations that are happening this week in New York and worldwide. So without further ado, I'm really pleased to welcome two of my colleagues from the Inclusive Generation Equality Collective Patricia Pam and Christina Duenas to the floor. Patricia is a women with disability advocate from Nigeria who will be speaking with us today about the collective and its work, as well as why the collective decided to create the Feminist Accessibility Protocol. Christina is a disabled woman advocate from Spain and she'll be talking, she'll be walking us through the protocol and its content and about also how to sign on. So with that, Patricia, I wanna bring you to the virtual floor. Please go ahead.
Okay, good evening, everyone. Can everybody hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you, Patricia. Can everybody hear me? Yes, yes we can. Okay, okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you, thank you, Amanda. Um, I will run you through the slides. Um, first of all, I will talk about um, what if what is uh, the Inclusive Generation Equality Collective? The Inclusive Generation Equality Collective is composed of feminists with disabilities in all their diversities and allies from across uh, major regions of the world. The group started in January 2021 to engage with the Generation Equality Forum. How was the accessibility in the forum? The Generational Equality Forum is an international multi-stakeholder process that seeks to accelerate progress toward gender equality through 2026. is comprised of feminists with disabilities who experience significant accessibility barriers joining the forum. Before I go into the feminist accessibility protocol, I had just run us through some small slides, how the group came about, and why the feminist accessibility protocol was developed. I'm taking you to the next slide. For instance, feminists with disabilities who participated in the 2000 and 2021 Generation Equality Forum experienced significant accessibility barrier to joining, participating, and leading within those forums. That is the reason for the Feminist Accessibility Protocol. Now in that forum, instead for women with disabilities or feminists with disabilities to have an opportunity to participate on, you know, on an equal basis, but they rather focus on the disability uh, challenges. Instead of them to be, to be bothered with the substantive issues, to be part of the discussion within the forum, to equally have like a, a major stake. But feminists with disabilities could not participate effectively because of the barriers they face. So basically, their experience was that of exclusion. You will agree with me that families with disabilities have experienced barriers over the years in interacting with the feminist movement, either in meetings, either in in-person events, either in virtual events, in advocacy spaces, we discover that women with disabilities or feminine with disabilities have issues with accessibility. So that is the reason why the feminists with, with, uh, with disabilities under the auspices of inclusive generation equality decided to respond to the accessibility barriers in feminist spaces. And the purpose for this uh, feminist accessibility protocol is aimed at ensuring accessibility in the global and national spaces, wherever important discussions are made on gender equality. I will talk about uh, the methods on how we develop this protocol. 
We conducted surveys. We conducted focus group discussions. We conducted interviews across 37 countries, across 109 women, trans, intersex, and non-binary persons with disabilities across 24 states of the United Nations agencies, across international feminist organizations. We gather information, gather um, the findings, and we came up with this feminist accessibility protocol to hear their experiences, hear their difficulties, their challenges, their exclusion, how they have not has, you know, uh, an equal stake on, on spaces of feminist disability, uh, on the feminist uh, movement, you know, globally. Their experiences are put together, you know, in this feminist protocol. And also I want us to look at the objective of the protocol. The protocol seek to ensure that the space is both in person and virtual, where these important discussions, where decisions you know, take place are fully accessible, are fully inclusive of families with disabilities. The objective of the protocol also intends to guide the work of actors who seek to advance gender equality at all levels. So this protocol basically is a guide to help mainstream disability in the promotion of gender equality, to make sure that issues of accessibility is paramount because with that inclusion, practically you're out of you know, the, the discussion table. Now, when was the document launched? The document was launched in December 2022. And, is, and uh, the, the protocol is equally available in international sign language, in international sign, easy to read, accessible, available also in Spanish version. Very soon we will have it in the Filipino too. About uh, 150 feminist actors, primarily really, uh, civil society and philanthropic organizations have signed. And uh, the essence for our engagement today is to have more organization, more feminist actors to sign on to this protocol. We want this protocol to guide work at the global level, at the regional level, at the national level, at the local level, to ensure that there is equal participation of feminists with, dis uh, feminists with uh, disabilities and their diverse groups to be part of uh, the promotion of uh, gender uh, equality. Thank you. I'll give the floor to Christina. Thank you. Thanks so much, Patricia. And this is Amanda again. Um, we will we have these PowerPoint presentations in a Google Drive that we my colleague has just linked in the chat. If you prefer to look at them on your own screen, um, I will be sharing my screen in just a second and bringing Christina back into the conversation. So over to you, Christina. Buenas tardes eh, desde España. Eh, muchas gracias, Amanda y, y Patricia. Soy una mujer con el pelo rizado, largo, llevo gafas y tengo una blusa blanca con unos círculos azules. Yo os voy a hablar sobre el, los compromisos en los, que, en los que están en el protocolo y además cómo poder firmarlo. Eh, como bien ha comentado mi compañera Patricia anteriormente, en el protocolo va dirigidos a estados, organizaciones feministas, agencias de las Naciones Unidas, demás entidades y personas a título personal que les gustaría eh, firmarlo. 
y que tengan una intención clara eh, de implantar acciones sobre accesibilidad en sus eventos y reuniones, tanto presenciales como virtuales, que aborden la igualdad eh, de género y que así se garantice de una manera real que las feministas con discapacidad eh, podemos participar activamente. ¿Puedes pasar la diapositiva, Amanda? Perfecto, en esta diapositiva en concreto, eh, bueno, eh, veis cómo están, hay tres imágenes, la primera se refiere a la portada del protocolo en español, la segunda es la primera página de los compromisos en español y la tercera es la portada del anexo en español. En concreto, en el protocolo vais a encontrar 13 compromisos colectivos a desarrollar dentro de los ámbitos eh, de la accesibilidad y la inclusión. Voy a detallarlos ahora más adelante. Son compromisos eh, para quienes firmen el protocolo, tengan como referencia las acciones fundamentales en materia de accesibilidad para garantizar la eh, participación de las feministas con discapacidad, tanto en eventos y reuniones sobre igualdad de género. Los compromisos, como ha comentado eh, Patricia, son el reflejo de todas las consultas que hicimos a eh, diferentes eh, grupos focales. Y desde aquí queremos dar las gracias a, a, ella, a ellas porque eh, sin su participación este protocolo no, no habría sido posible. Estos 13 compromisos buscan orientar el trabajo de quienes buscan promover la igualdad de género a nivel local, nacional, regional y mundial, además de servir como una herramienta de incidencia para activistas para promover la toma de conciencia de sus estados y organizaciones feministas en sus redes sobre la importancia de garantizar la accesibilidad en cualquier discusión sobre igualdad de género. A continuación, les voy a mostrar algunos ejemplos de compromisos. Por favor, ¿puedes pasar a la diapositiva? Perfecto. Eh, en el primero de los compromisos, eh, lo que buscamos es hacer referencia a esa necesidad clara del reconocimiento de las feministas con discapacidad. No solo en aquellos eventos donde se trate la discapacidad, que ahí ya estamos, sino en todos los eventos donde se refiera a la igualdad de género. Nosotras también tenemos interés en ese tipo de reuniones y se nos debe dar la oportunidad de formar parte de la organización, del diseño, de la planificación, de la seguridad, protección, etc. El segundo va relacionado con la inclusión de las feministas con discapacidad y derribar esas barreras que han existido sobre exclusión a la hora de participar y liderar eventos y reuniones sobre la temática de igualdad de género. ¿Y cómo se puede lograr esto? Pues bueno, a través de acciones de accesibilidad, ajustes y dar el apoyo necesario en cada caso. Es muy importante no solo reconocer que es esencial que las feministas con discapacidad tienen, tenemos derecho a participar y liderar, sino que hay que hacer todo lo posible para que esto sea real. Siguiente diapositiva. En el tercero, eh, se pone el foco en que los firmantes acepten elaborar un presupuesto inclusivo para este tipo de eventos y reuniones. Bueno, ¿y qué debería de incluir este, event, este presupuesto? Entre otras cosas, mediar la accesibilidad, dar apoyo en los costes a los participantes, a las personas de apoyo o asistentes personales, entre otras cosas. Cada firmante irá adaptando progresivamente sus presupuestos e irá incluyendo todos los apartados que deben de, de, de tener en cuenta. En los compromisos sexto, séptimo, octavo y noveno, se centran en las distintas eh, ramas de la accesibilidad, como la física, la de la comunicación, la cognitiva, eh, por ejemplo, también la que es destinada al colectivo de personas con discapacidad psicosocial y con entidades eh, neurodiversas. Siguiente diapositiva.
en el último de los compromisos lo que se pretende es profundizar en cómo de importante es eliminar todas las situaciones de opresión que sufren las feministas con discapacidad y que no nos permiten una participación en el movimiento feminista hacia la igualdad de género y que los firmantes se comprometan a promover los derechos cuando el género y la discapacidad convergen en todo el mundo. Con estos compromisos esperamos que los feministas con discapacidad eh, podamos participar y dirigir el movimiento feminista en igualdad de condiciones y que los debates y las decisiones tomadas en estos espacios reflejen las prioridades y las realidades experimentadas por quienes viven la interseccionalidad de género y discapacidad y enfrentan eh, una exclusión estructural por ello. Además de los 13 compromisos, Comentar que en el protocolo hay un anexo en el que se recogen buenas prácticas, eh, todas las conclusiones de los grupos focales, además de normativa que garantiza el derecho a la accesibilidad. La siguiente diapositiva, Amanda. Bueno, y ahora llega el momento de cómo firmar el protocolo. El protocolo está en diferentes formatos, como ha comentado eh, eh, Patricia. Además, lo podéis encontrar en los diferentes links que os vamos a ir compartiendo en el chat y ahí tendréis un formulario para, para poder firmarlo. Y la última diapositiva. Vale. Bueno, si eres un representante de un Estado, agencia de la ONU u organización, te animamos a que firmes el protocolo. Eh, si no lo eres, pero deseas apoyarlo, te animamos también a que lo difundas en tus redes y fomentar que más actores lo, lo firmen. También se puede firmar eh, individualmente. La igualdad de género nunca eh, se conseguirá si se excluye a las feministas con discapacidad y la accesibilidad es la herramienta para conseguir nuestra participación. Y este protocolo puede ser el inicio de ese avance. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Amanda. Thank you so much, Cristina and Patricia, um, for those excellent presentations and summaries of the work of the collective and of the protocol as well. I want to check in with our opening speaker, Getty, to see if she is now able to connect and if we were able to hear her at this stage um, that, so that she can deliver her remarks. So Getty, if you are there, I'd love to pass the floor over to you. Okay, it appears we're still having some technical difficulties with Getty being able to connect today. My apologies, everyone. Maybe in the absence of, of her intervention, I can share just a quick reflection for myself about why the protocol is so important to me and deeply meaningful in my work as a disabled woman myself who has interacted for many years in the disability rights and feminist communities. You know, whenever I enter a feminist space, there's always a little question in the back of my head about whether I'm gonna be asked what my needs are for accessibility. If I am asked whether people will actually follow through on helping me with those accessibility measures and how many times I'm going to have to ask, uh, how many times I'm going to have to insist and what I'm willing to tolerate one way or the other uh, in terms of not getting the accessibility measures I need to participate on an equal basis with the other feminists in the room. For me, this protocol changes that conversation completely. It says, hey, feminist actors, take this upon yourselves to be proactive, to reach out to me and to other feminists with disabilities to learn what we need, to take the steps without us even having to ask that ensure our inclusion and make sure that we can be in the room. And what that does is it shifts my mental load from having to think about whether and how I'll participate to being able to actually focus on the discussions that are going to happen in the room, prepare and be the best advocate that I can for feminists with disabilities around the world and for our rights. So that's why it's so important from my perspective that this document exists and that feminist actors are signing on to it and committing and implementing it on the ground. 
And so, you know, it's my pleasure to introduce the next segment of this discussion, which is going to show how the feminist accessibility protocol can be put into action on the ground by feminist actors. We're joined today by Gretchen Gasteyer of Women Deliver. She was the co-lead of the recent Women Deliver conference, um, which was held in July in Kigali, Rwanda. And I'm sure many of you were there or heard about the conference and its successes. We're also joined by my colleague, Virginia Osana, who's the programs advisor at Women Enabled International and worked extensively with Gretchen on the implementation of um, the Women Deliver conference this year. Uh, Women Deliver was the very first group to sign on to the protocol and also committed to accessibility and inclusion through the generation equality process. And that conference a few months ago is a great example of what we can do to turn these commitments into action. So handing the floor over to you all, Virginia and Gretchen. Thank you so much, um, Amanda, and thank you so much for the great segue into this, this part of the conversation. Gretchen, I am so happy to be able to talk to you one more time and to go over the wonderful experience that Women Deliver was. We, um, we've been uh, working very closely together to um, make Women Deliver uh, an accessible space. And so I'm really happy to um, look back on everything that was achieved and what we can still do um, into the future. So um, Gretchen, would you like to um, talk a little bit about what Women Deliver was and why um, you committed to uh, making with the Women Deliver Conference a more inclusive one and why you decided to sign on to the Feminist Accessibility Protocol? Sure, thank you, Virginia. Um, and thank you for inviting me to speak with you today. It's been a true pleasure working with Women Enabled International over the past couple of years um, and also the many other accessibility advisors that, that have helped uh, shaped Women Deliver uh, in July. Uh, for those that you, uh, for those of you that weren't uh, in attendance at the conference or aren't familiar, Women Deliver is a triennial conference uh, that is one of the largest convenings for gender equality and the health and rights of girls and women globally. Uh, the conference was held in Kigali, Rwanda in July and also virtually. We had over 6,500 uh, people in attendance on site uh, and thousands more participating uh, online. Um, we have, uh, it's a very wide uh, tent in terms of conversations around gender equality. Uh, there were a lot of different topics discussed um, and we'll be sharing a report uh, in the next uh, month or so, so you can all uh, learn more about the outcomes of Women Deliver. The theme of this year's conference was spaces, solidarity and solutions. And when we were beginning to plan the conference, it was around the time of Generation Equality Forum and the call for commitments being made. And it was really um, very easy for us to know what our priorities should be around the conference. Uh, we received a letter um, and advocacy from uh, a group of, of feminists with disabilities after our 2019 conference calling on us to do better um, around accessibility and inclusion at our convenings. And we took that very seriously and knew that we needed to improve and prioritize accessibility for our next conference. So that's why we made um, the commitment uh, during Generation Equality Forum around ensuring that this is our most accessible, diverse, and inclusive conference that we'd had to date. Um, and I do feel confident that we delivered on that experience for WD 2023. Um, and it took a lot of a lot of preparation, a lot of work, and a lot of thought um, to, to make sure that that could come to fruition and then a lot of co-creation and working uh, with partners. Um, we, we know it's not just the right thing to do, um, but it's the necessary thing to do to ensure that these spaces where we're discussing really key issues and moving the needle on gender equality, they need to include girls and women with disabilities um, and center them in those conversations. Uh, as you all know, uh, girls and women with disabilities are a large part of the global population, um, and they need to be centered in these conversations in order to really achieve gender equality. Great, thanks so much for that. And I, I think it was just beautiful to see how many feminists with disabilities were present at Women Deliver 
And I think from our side, from the side of um, an organization that works to advance human rights at the intersection of gender and disability, um, even before the conference um, happened, when you signed up, uh, you signed the feminist accessibility protocol. From our side, it felt um, that you were serious about the commitment to accessibility, and that it wasn't just um, words. That you weren't just talking about including us, but you were putting those words to action and related to what, what Amanda was saying earlier. That takes such a huge mental load from um, the usual, from our usual experience of having to put a lot of time and a lot of energy into advocating for accessibility to be able to um, get a seat at the table. And sometimes, and oftentimes, we missed um, the opportunity to discuss the substance of the of the conversations. And so, this time, getting into um, the planning of women deliver and the advising role that we had, knowing that you had signed the protocol, that sort of gave us a peace of mind to know that we would be able and that our community was going to be able to participate meaningfully in the conversations. And I was so happy to, uh, to see that that was the case. We will be sharing some more, um, some more uh, good practices and details of what happened at the at the conference, but that um, spoiler alert alerts that it did happen. So it was a it was a marvelous experience to see um, so many feminists with disabilities being um, being actively participating. And then um, another question: I know you um, I know you already talked about a few of the steps, but what um, what do you think are some of the most relevant steps from your side? Um, having worked uh, with us to um, ensure the inclusion of feminists with disabilities, which ones do you think are the ones that were most effective? Thanks, Virginia. I think really prioritizing it from the outset of your planning for the event. So uh, that includes um, budgeting, making sure when you're creating your budget that you're including measures uh, for accessibility, whether it's interpretation, both language interpretation, sign language interpretation, um, if it's a physical space, um, thinking about what accommodations might need to be made if there's changes that need to be made at the physical space and then bringing on experts as we had we brought on consultants um, so we budgeted for to pay those consultants to to do an audit of the space um, and to do trainings as well and and to act as advisors during the conference so really thinking about what are the steps that you can take and what can you include in your budget and then talking to um, experts. Women Deliver is not um, a, an expert in this area, but we are a global convener. Um, so we are trying to be learn more uh, through um, whether it's advisors like uh, Women Enabled acted as on our advisory group or as consultants that we brought on to the Women Deliver team. Um, and I think having those audits of our physical spaces and venues as well as our virtual website and the virtual platform, having consultants uh, who are experts do those audits um, at the beginning of the process so we could then create a work plan and work together with the developers and the venue managers, um, which is what we did. We had very detailed work plans on what accommodations and changes, amendments uh, that needed to be made in, in the convening spaces. Um, and also training. I think that's a key element uh, that we trained our staff, but also anybody who'd be interacting with the delegates, whether it was hotel staff or venue staff, um, security at, in Kigali's um, convention center had a training, volunteers, um, and we provided both written materials and an in-person training on site so that folks just are aware of the diverse delegates that are going to be coming into the venues and how um, to make it feel like a welcoming place, um, uh, best practices, etc. And then uh, Providing space on the stage is key. It's not just opening up the space and making it accessible to literally come into the space and participate, but 
engaging them in the programming and leading in determining what is it that the conversation should be um, speaking on stage. So it's um, they can speak as experts in their own areas, not just as disability advocates, but on ex on areas of sexual and reproductive health um, or education. Um, there's there we're there to discuss a lot of uh, topics related to gender equality. So making sure that they um, uh, have access to to the stages and the the programming. Thank you so much for that. And now uh, I want to share some of my favorite things as well related to um, sharing the stage and opening up the stage. Um, I also wanted to highlight that uh, Women Delivered 2023 had um, three. Um, women with disabilities in plenary stages. Our executive director from Women Enabled International being one of them, Maria Angel Garcia Ramos, and also Getty Oforiwa, who is also present here today. Unfortunately, Getty has been having some, um, some uh, technical issues, but Getty was one of the plenary speakers, as well as Catalina de Bandas, who was... Um, a former rapporteur of persons with disabilities at the UN, and now the current uh, executive director of Disability Rights Fund. So it was really great to see um, those powerhouses being able to take the stage and share their expertise. It was just, uh, it was really wonderful. And also um, I want to elevate uh, the point about the budget because it's um, sometimes a misconception that um, accessibility is more expensive and that it will it will cost a lot but it it is it is not necessarily the case if you budget for it and you do it at the beginning so i wanted to elevate that as well as well as some other measures which i think were key for um the the participation of um other um people with people with disabilities as well like the deaf community um people who required um, sign language interpretation were able to take their own interpreters with them at no extra cost. And then the interpreters were paid their fees by um, women deliver as well, which I think was, was really great. And for me personally, it was really moving to see um, many, many groups of deaf um, people being able to participate in sessions and being able to be active with their interpreters there. So I think that was a really huge win as well and something that we don't necessarily see often. And I think it's a good practice that we should keep um, keep maintaining um, into the future. I think another, another um, really great uh, practice was to um, have people with disabilities who require the personal assistant, take the personal assistant with them without uh, them having to pay for registrations as well. So wanted to elevate those as well, because those are key practices to ensuring that conferences are accessible to um, feminists with disabilities. And it was just so great to see, um, to see so many of us there. Um, and now I have a question uh, related to what made you most proud in terms of the um, inclusion of feminists with disabilities? What like brought you joy and said, and you said, you know, oh, we made this happen. Yeah, I mean, there, it just feels so great being at the conference and seeing everybody in person who's worked so hard um, to advocate for their communities. And then we're finally able to be together, especially after coming out of the pandemic, um, which isn't over, but uh, it was the first time that Women Deliver had been able to convene together. Um, it, it was just such a wonderful feeling of joy. Uh, so that was just, I mean, the whole experience was a wonderful memory for me. We did conduct a survey uh, post-conference um, and asked about satisfaction around accessibility. For those that participated on site, 81% uh, were satisfied with accessibility of the conference venues. 10% um, were, were neutral, didn't comment, and um, with a small percent being uh, dissatisfied. Um, and similarly uh, for the virtual conference, similar numbers. So the fact that one of the highest levels of satisfaction around the conference was around accessibility is something that we're very proud of. 
um, hearing uh, the anecdotes and what people wrote in the survey, they felt um, overall acknowledged at the conference and safe and that they were welcomed and included, um, not feeling discriminated against by um, uh, just venue staff or security or other people that maybe aren't as familiar with, with the space or, or the conference, um, the, the topics of the conference, but felt very welcomed by, by everybody that they were interacting with. Um, many remarked how it was the most diverse conference that they'd been to, um, or not just Women Deliver, but ever in some cases. Uh, and we're very happy with um, the, the diversity of participants. Um, I'm very proud of the ripple effect that this has had um, in terms of learning about best practices around accessibility. We've been doing uh, debriefs with many of our conference vendors from our website designers uh, to the Kigali Convention Center and the arena um, to our, our conference vendors uh, that helped build the exhibition space, et cetera. They all said that they learned so much about accessibility and had never worked with a convening that prioritized accessibility as much as we did and that they're going to take these learnings moving forward. So it's going to, I think we'll see it in future conferences in Rwanda. They, everybody was so eager to learn and to implement these best practices. Um, we even changed a policy at the venue around guide dogs um, and uh, uh, animals that uh, assist folks so that that's um, part of their policy moving forward and included. So hearing those things, um, we're really proud. Uh, and I'm, I'm personally proud that this is part of Women Deliver's ethos now moving forward um, and will be a priority for our convenings uh, from now on. It is really great to hear all of that because it is a lot to, to be proud of, about. I think from our side, not only the points that you just mentioned, but also we had um, a space called the Disability Solidarity Space. Many communities had um, specific um, you know, spaces to convene and talk about the, um, the challenges and, and the wins of of each community. And I think it was a really enriching space. We had um, over 120 people in the room, um, really eager to celebrate all of what we have achieved as a movement and really um, eager to share as well the challenges that lie ahead. And I think being able to do that um, in person after all of this time, was really it was really great to see like the level of interest and enthusiasm and the level of care also with, with which people treated each other. It was just a lovely um, atmosphere to be to be a part of that um, event and to see how people really wanted um, to be with one another and to continue um, continue the fight going forward. So I think the that space was for me one of the ones that made me feel happier and most proud of the work that we had done to to get there and also as you say the the great feedback that we got from um families with disabilities themselves hearing them say that um they were navigating the spaces easily or even if if they had a challenge that they were able to come to us or to you and have that challenge be resolved so i think thing that was really um, great to see. Another thing that I was so um, happy about and like I got to the venue and it moved me almost to tears was when I when I got to the Kigali Convention Center, you crossed the, do the door and the accessibility um, booth was right there. And a person from the accessibility booth would come to you and ask you if you needed anything, what kind of support you needed. Um, and it was great to see accessibility taking a center stage and not having, you know, having to walk miles and like go into like a hidden corner of the convention center to get what you needed. So I think having that front and center really made um, me and I'm sure a lot of uh, many other disabled people as well like we 
were not hidden. We were there, proud to be there. And it was just a great experience. So thank you so much for that. And now um, my last question of this conversation is, you know, taking into consideration that um, learning about accessibility and inclusion of persons with disability is a journey, is a process. You know, it is one of the, it is in fact one of the commitments within the feminist accessibility protocol. What do you think um, are some of the lessons learned of things that could um, go better next time, taking into consideration into consideration the feedback you received from feminists with disabilities. Yeah, I think that there's so much that we're proud of and so much that we learned, but there's always going to be room for improvement. There always are going to be mistakes that have been made, um, but I think it's really the biggest lesson is just to keep trying um, and to learn and to improve upon that in the future. Um, I think even if something isn't perfect, um, for example, the interpretation, we had originally wanted all of the sessions to have an international sign language interpreter, and that was our goal. Um, as we got closer to the conference, we realized we weren't able to actually hire that many. Um, as I'm sure many of you know, there's not uh, a, a very many ISL interpreters in the world, um, so it just wasn't going to work for the amount of programming. So uh, thinking creatively, um, and finding solutions like, um, as you said, Virginia, we pivoted to having to supporting uh, uh, groups of people or an individual if they had an, uh, their own interpreter that they worked with, they could bring them to the conference with them. Um, and I wish we had done that earlier because there was some last minute scrambling for folks to find interpreters. Um, so that was a lesson learned that um, that actually made more sense than what we were originally planning. Um, I uh, We spoke about the pandemic, and I think those folks that uh, have chronic illnesses, that wasn't at the forefront of our thinking when we were thinking about accessibility. Um, we were following the guidelines set by Rwanda around um, masks or, or um, PPE being used at the site. And while we provided that, it wasn't enforced in any way. So I think we could have done more to share uh, publicly that there are folks suffering from chronic illness and that there is um, more that we could do to support them and be supportive in the community. Um, and so I think having that, thinking about that in the future is a lesson learned. Um, and we also didn't anticipate the number of wheelchairs that would be requested on site. So, um, or the, that folks would need them for the entire conference. So having more wheelchairs uh, would have been helpful or um, predetermining some places where folks could go get a wheelchair or could have a wheelchair delivered to them. Um, that was something we were doing um, more of on site than we had originally anticipated. Um, but ultimately, I think the biggest lesson is just to talking with feminists with disabilities who understand um, both globally what pr the best practices are, but also really in context um, and in the context of where you're holding that convening, because they can share more about this is how things typically work in this context, or this is what you can expect in Kigali. And um, that was very helpful when we did talk to, to feminists uh, with disabilities in Rwanda um, on how we can, um, where we can go to find resources and to understand the context better. So really having those conversations um, as soon as you start your planning uh, is is the biggest thing I can say, uh, to, uh, the biggest piece of advice I can I can give. Thank you so much, Gretchen, for um, for the transparency, for the own for the honesty, for owning up to uh, the things that can um, be done better in the future, and we commit to doing better in the future as well as advocates and as part of the um, uh, of the. Um, um consulting group i forgot the advisory group i forgot the name of the of the group just now um but we commit to doing better um next time as well and we uh, own our our share there i think accountability is really important that's another another key word um when uh you know ensuring the inclusion of feminists with disabilities it has been nothing but not, but an honor for me to be able to work with you um, and with all of the women deliver team 
Because as I said earlier, it's not just talking about inclusion, it's acting on the on your words. And um, we see a clear intention and a clear positive impact as well. So thank you so much um, on behalf of uh, women enabled, but also the disability community as well. Amanda, back to you. Thank you, Virginia. Thanks so much, Virginia and Gretchen, um, for that enlightening conversation. It was really interesting to hear kind of the behind the scenes of what goes on in organizing a feminist conference like this, and particularly when accessibility and inclusivity are such obvious priorities as they were. Um, and, you know, I just want to call out some of the other actors who helped support um, disabled feminists to attend the conference this year, some of whom are co-sponsors on this event. Groups like Disability Consulting, which has done doing a lot of work on the ground to help out with Women Deliver, as well as International Disability Alliance, Sight Savers, CREA, and Disability Rights Fund, who are all uh, participating in today's event as well, and which also helped make this an accessible and feminist space where women with disabilities could participate on an equal basis. So we've just heard from Virginia and Gretchen about how the Women Deliver Conference was put together and how accessibility and inclusivity were prioritized. I wanna hand the floor now to a colleague from the Inclusive Generation Equality Collective who was there at Women Deliver and can speak to us more about what the experience was like for her and other feminists with disabilities on the ground. So Sheila May Agaroa is the manager of Nationwide Organization for Visually Impaired Empowered Ladies in the Philippines, an Inclusive Generation Equality Collective member and a representative of the collective at Women Deliver this year. So Sheila, I'll hand the floor over to you and then I will share my screen in just a moment. Yeah, thank you, Amanda. Good day, everyone. I'm Sheila from the Philippines, but I'm cur currently I'm speaking uh, here in Germany. So hello to all of you. I just would like to briefly ex uh, describe myself. I have uh, long hair with uh, brown uh, highlights and I'm wearing an orange dress. Uh, orange, which is similar to the SDG5 icon color for gender equality. So yeah, happy GF midpoint event moment to all of you and SDG Summit to everyone. Uh, yeah, um, I'm really excited to share my experience during the uh, Women Deliver Conference in Kigali, Rwanda. It's been a while for me since the last time I attended a massive conference. So I was really thrilled to be there. And as a member of the collective and one of the developers of the Feminist Accessibility Protocol, it was... Um, I was I had high hopes and expe expectations on how the commitment would be turned into reality. And, you know, it, I... Um, the conference and the women deliver um, was did an amazing job of you know um, making their pledge really into practice. So yeah, next slide, please. So um, let me just share to you why was the IGEC or the collective uh, part of the women deliver conference. So let me borrow let me borrow the theme of the conference, which is spaces, solidarity, and solutions. First is that we want to infiltrate spaces. I know infiltrate is kind of a big word, but we, that's what we, we want to do. And secondly, we want to be in solidarity with uh, the uh, feminists around the world and also with our with our, the allies that um, Ha, uh, women Deliver Conference had in, in July. And lastly, we want to explore and co-create solutions with everyone. So in this slide, you will see my picture. I'm uh, on, a, on a sidewalk on the road leading to Kigali Convention Center. And I was gesturing the the gesturing to the dome building of the Kigali Convention Center. So look at that picture of my smile, a smile of a person that is very happy and satisfied <laughs> attending a, con a, a conference such as Women Deliver. Next slide, please. Okay, so let me um uh yeah um share to you uh what I what we meant by infiltrating spaces. So um uh. It was a big conference of six, six, uh, more than 6,000 people. And, you know, um, 
we really had to strategize and position ourselves, myself in particular, in attending events. So I had to balance um, attending disability focused events as well as, as being present in the mainstream feminist events and, you know, asking questions like, how are women, girls, and gender diverse people with disabilities are meaningfully included in your policies and programs? How is um, the budget and resource allocation for us? And like for the GF Impact Fest, asking what's the progress about disability inclusion and how it is being monitored. And with that, um, I injected and raised awareness about the feminist accessibility protocol and about we, the gener Inclusive Generation Equality Collective, could support those who want to sign up and who want to commit to this um, uh, accessibility commitments um, all, all along the way. And lastly, um, uh, we, and um, of course, um, we want to... Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, of course, uh, we, I, we wanted to experience and the facilities and events and yeah, pay attention to the accessibility practices and of course, look out for, for barriers and challenges that may that might come along the way. So in this picture, you will see me uh, with another young feminist leader. I met him during the Action Coalition dinner um, uh, and she moderated uh, one of the sessions during the GF Impact Fest, which I also attended. Next slide, please. Yeah, yeah. So here's a photo of Virginia, my colleague from the collective, who just spoke a while back. And um, there is also a quote here saying that women with disabilities are experts on disability, but we are also experts on gender and on areas that we uh, that we want. Uh, that we need to be involved. So um, we, uh, the Feminist Accessibility Protocol is a groundbreaking set of 13 accessibility commitments that will ensure the meaningful inclusion of women, girls, um, trans, non-binary, and intersex persons with disabilities in all gender equality meetings and events. So please sign up sign up to the protocol so yeah she's right um we're not we can talk about disability and accessibility all day long but we don't but we can also be contributing and we can also um propose solutions to other other areas and concerns and you know we do not want to be stuck up discussing this our dis uh, disability and our accessibility issues while everyone else has moved on with the agenda so yeah next slide please Okay, so so here's um, from this point on, I'm going to share to you the tangible results, the tangible um, uh, things that has manifested in the in, in the conference with the uh, with the action taken by women deliver uh, by women deliver. So first is like um, recognition, participation, and belonging. So. So you can see in this slide is a picture of feminists with disabilities and disability rights advocates uh, talking in a very big hall. So we were, um, uh, we were like able to be part of the 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 entire conference, not just as participants but also as um, moderators, resource persons. Uh, Part as advisors, consultants, and even volunteers who supported the participants in their uh, in the conference. And uh, uh, next slide, please. So there's uh, intersectional leadership and inclusion. So many feminists with disabilities were able to attend, coming from different countries around the globe, from different backgrounds and contexts. Some of us working on the global scale and some of us are working on a local level so it was a really really uh, a great experience for all of us yeah so next slide please yeah so budgeting for accessibility and the culture of access so it was uh, mentioned earlier that there was really um a real there were uh, really resources that were allocated it was um 
very intentional allocation of resources and also making sure that um, there is uh, a culture of access was established within the conference. So you will see in this picture uh, a, a, a press packet wherein it contains about guidance on disability inclusive language and um, also there were accessibility guidelines not only uh, through email but also during the online meetings before the conference had started and there's also a dedicated accessibility email where we can send our concerns and give feedback yeah and of, uh, as mentioned earlier there was support for me to to bring along a personal assist assistant who really supportive my effective participation during the conference next slide please yeah, there was an accessible and confidential registration process. You can see on the slide um, a picture, my picture and my personal assistant's uh, picture uh, wearing our uh, register uh, badges and also have our con and holding our conference bag. So it was a very nice experience. Like when you arrive at the DKK Arena, um, there were already volunteers who will who will support you assist you in getting your your badges and even the registration itself and like for the visa application there were also guidance both on email again and through online yep so next slide please yeah so here here is a video of the um resource persons during the plenary one of the plenary sessions about um, building sustaining movements and one of the speakers is um, Marianne Hell uh, the executive director of Women Enabled International who's using a um, uh, a wheelchair and she is um, yeah followed uh, following her are the other resource persons so you can see in the slide that they're like uh, take, getting into the ramp, going to the stage. So when we think about stage, we'll see, you, you'll think about steps going up to the stage. But now here, here's the ramp that, you know, it looks fabulous. <laughs> it doesn't only provide accessibility, it looks fabulous. Yep. And also about the access, physical accessibility, I, I, I felt that it was easy to navigate from one place to another, um, from one event to another, and from one like hotel to another convention place because there are for provided access, um, transportation support and signages where to go. And also, but of course, um, uh, there's uh, also still a need to increase more about the, ac the accessible transportation and that those are one of the lessons learned. Yep. Next slide, please. Yeah. So in terms of communication access, as mentioned, um, there was really uh, um, the, the involvement of people work, uh, uh, deaf communities and uh, the, uh, international sign interpreters so they can uh, be present in in almost all of the events, uh, like you can see here in the slide that there is a sign a screen where there is a sign international sign interpreter for the opening session. So, um, and you will find that also on the mobile app uh, uh, of the Women Deliver. And as a screen reader user myself, I found the, the app very accessible. I can navigate through it. I can search for events, uh, look for the schedules, search for people, message, message them, and wow, it was really fantastic. And also that the different uh, formats, um, platforms are also, online platforms are also accessible to, to, uh, to us. Yeah, so next slide, please. Okay, so about psychosocial and neurodiverse identity access. So one, one um, tangible um, uh, uh, result of this um, commitment is the mental health spaces, the quiet room, the timeout room where, you know, with this kind of uh, conferences of 6,000 people like, you need some time to relax, to chill and reflect. And yeah, there are, there's a, an, a nice room on the, in the Kigali Convention Center where this can be done. And there were also like yoga classes and uh, stress relieving 
uh, pra, um, activities during the conference. Next uh, slide, please. So yeah, inclusive outcomes again. Yeah, centering feminists with disabilities not only from the planning, planning. Uh, phase implementation, but again, up to the monitoring and evaluation phase. So, yep. next slide, please. So, there was a, con a continuous communication between Women Deliver and Women, um, the Collective and Women Enabled International. Uh, you, as, you, as you heard a while back from, from Gretchen, from Virginia, that, you know, it doesn't stop here. It, it will always be a continuous process for all of us. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And also that accessibility desk that... Uh, Virginia was talking about earlier. So here's a video of it showing that accessibility desk um, in the um, in the conference. So next slide. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, so um, from pledge to practice, um, you know, Gretchen said that accessibility and inclusion is now you know one of their ethos and yeah um they proudly share it in the actually in the website of the women deliver where they're in they say that they signed up to the protocol and they are committed to the accessibility and inclusion and yeah um they are really practicing what they have uh, pledged to to not just to not just to the protocol as a document, but for the entire families with disabilities and allies around the world. Yep. And I think that's that was a very brave and very serious <laughs> act, a move on their part. Yep. And of course, dismantling systems of oppression, um, yes, yeah, mentioned earlier, ensuring meaningful participation and barriers are being addressed for all uh, families with disabilities. So yeah, you can see here a picture of different disability advocates. Um, and one of them is Disability Kenya, who was uh, an African-based organization because of course, being women deliver uh, happening in Africa is uh, such an, an important, a very, it's very important. They also involve you know, um, groups that are locally uh, situated on the African region. Yep. Yeah, and with that, with that, with that um, uh, practice that they have, we were able to be in solidarity with different feminists and allies. So we were able to build partnership, um, uh, meet new people, and you know, being on that space, enjoy and learn from the different spaces. So you will see here me my pictures with other advocates that I met. You know, a lovely dinner with my colleagues from the Women Enabled International and also a picture of me with a volunteer. So I, I established a friendship with a volunteer from the from the conference. I think the volunteers did a great job of, uh, you know, assist, assisting people and not to mention that they are we wearing yellow. That is very accessible for a person with low vision with me so I can easily spot them. <laughs> yeah. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so um, finally, here it is, exploring and um, co-creating solutions with everyone. So um, here's a picture of Getty, and let me just borrow her quote. She said that um, out of the anger that we had during the Generation Equality Forum um, came our determination to act, and that action um, resulted to the Feminist Accessibility Protocol and the Inclusive Generation Equality Collective. And now, we need you, our collaborators, our, our friends, our colleagues, uh, feminist organizations, UN agencies, governments, to sign up to the protocol, the old champions of human rights, and make the Feminist Accessibility Protocol, the foundation of gender equality spaces um, all around the world. And yeah, I mean, uh, I, I remember again um, Gretchen saying seriously, like if we are really serious with our commitment to include everyone, include uh, women, girls, and gender diverse with disabilities, signing up to the protocol is the 
is a start for all of us. And we can work this out together. It's not just you. It, uh, we can do it together. And, you know, the, the protocol, uh, the Women Deliver Conference wasn't a perfect uh, event. There are still barriers, but, you know, it's a perfect um, uh, uh, testament, a perfect, um, a perfect example that it's doable, it's possible if we work this out together. So, yeah, next slide, please. So, it's a slide of me uh, during the opening session, opening ceremonies, and I just would like to thank you, everyone, for listening and being here, and I hope that we'll see each other again, and I enjoyed my experience during the Women Deliver Conference. Thank you to all the people who supported me in this uh, event as well. So, uh, good day to everyone. Over to you, Amanda. Thanks so much, Sheila. And I think you could really hear kind of the positive energy from that presentation and what um, a compelling experience you were able to have at Women Deliver um, in large part because of uh, the ways that they, they implemented the protocol on the ground. So thank you so much for sharing that. And this couldn't be a better segue because I am hoping now that we can bring in Gertrude Oferiro Fefawame, whose mic and camera, I believe, are now working. Um, Getty, if you're there, do you want to share with us any, uh, just a few thoughts on your ideas around the protocol and on your experience with Women Deliver? And following that, we will open it up to the audience for questions and reflections. So Getty, if you're there, hopefully third time's the charm, over to you. Okay, third time is not the charm today. That is too bad, but what it does do is it means that we have about 10 minutes to hear from those of you who are here in the audience today. Um, what questions do you have for the people who've spoken today? Um, what reflections do you have? What experiences do you wanna share about your participation in feminist spaces and what can or should be done to, to make those even better? If you want to participate in this question and answer, you can either pop your question in the chat and we'll read it aloud or you can raise, use the raise hand function in Zoom, and then we will call on you. Alternatively, if neither of those is available to you, please feel free to uh, come on camera and let us know in any way that you can, that you want to speak. And we look forward to hearing your thoughts and questions. Just to say also, while people are uh, coming to the floor with their thoughts and questions, that all the presentations today will be available on the Google link drive that uh, my colleague shared earlier in the chat. We'll also distribute that following the event to those of you who are in the room today. So thank you for that. And I see that um, there is a hand raised uh, from my colleague, Alana. So Alana, over to you for a question. Thank you, Amanda, uh, and thank you everyone for those wonderful presentations. Uh, I'm Alana Carvalho, I work at Women Enabled, and I'm also a member of the Inclusive Generation Equality Collective. And when we are all advocating for the protocol, we often hear from organizations that just see the challenges of implementing the Feminist Accessibility Protocol and that they are concerned about signing on to the protocol and not being able to really implement it. So I'd love to hear from Gretchen uh, an encouraging message from her uh, for those organizations interested in signing on to the protocol, but not sure if they would be able to implement those good practices. Thanks, Alana. Um, I think it might be intimidating for folks that aren't experts in this area or used to having um, thinking about accessibility at the forefront and they're afraid to fail 
or that they think that they have to implement everything um, to perfection. Otherwise, they haven't really implemented the protocol. But I think our biggest lesson as Women Deliver is you have to try. And even taking some measures is better than taking none and sharing that you are committed to doing your best to uh, um, uh, input as many of these measures of the protocol into place that you can and being transparent about what's possible. What can uh, your organization do? Um, and then talk to other advisors um, and experts. Like when I wasn't sure how are we gonna do this, I would reach out to Virginia or one of our consultants um, or somebody else and they would have um, a creative solution or um, another method that we could use. So I would really encourage people not to be scared um, that, that it's not going to be possible or you don't have the resources or the funding to implement these accessibility measures, but making that commitment to do what you can and to learn um, is step one, and uh, we can all do that. Great answer, Gretchen, and thanks so much for that uh, excellent question as well, Alana. Um, there was a question in the chat as well, which I'm going to read out loud in just a moment. It said, for those of us wanting to make our work more accessible, is there a live repository of organizations and consultants that are available to advise for compensation or otherwise? Does anyone from the collective or Virginia or Gretchen, do you want to come in and talk about um, your experiences with advising and consulting around um, disability inclusion and accessibility? Yeah, go ahead, Virginia. I'll take this one, but um, if you feel, Amanda, or anyone else that you have something to add after I speak, please do so. Um, I am not aware of a repository, per se, of, cons of disability rights consultants that might be able to advise, but I, um, my advice would be to reach out to organizations of persons with disabilities that um, you know, are in your area, or you can come to us and, and we can direct you to, um, we can connect you. Um, a big part of what we do at Women Enabled International is movement building. So we uh, build the bridges, we build the connections. So don't be afraid to reach out to us um, and we can we can connect you to people that can, that can advise. So for instance, we did that with, um, with Women Deliver, when um, Women Deliver uh, was planning on um, hiring their their disability focal, and they they decided on Disability Kenya, we sent them um, a few options of, of people that we had worked with in the past, and then they uh, conducted their own interviews, um, and it works like that with other organizations as well. So I am not aware of like a one resource when there when where all the information is available. But um, I think one way around it is to um, network and um, yeah, reach out to people and connect because I'm sure all of us will be happy to help in that way. Thanks for that, Virginia. And yeah, for providing that guidance in the absence of there being kind of one repository of, the, of that type of information for as a resource. Um, one last question, and then we'll close out the session. Um, this question came in through the chat. It said, it would be really interesting to hear from Gretchen what factors, organizational, cultural, et cetera, you think meant that Women Deliver took the protocol and accessibility so seriously. So Gretchen, would you be willing to come in and answer that one? Sure. Thank you, Hannah. So we de we decided as an organization that it was going to be a priority and much of that was from advocacy like this group right here and folks that are on the call 
after the 2019 conference um, and the, the recommendations and the letter and the advocacy that we received. Um, and we knew that we had to do better in terms of accessibility. And so our leadership at the organization prioritized that. Um, and then you had uh, people like myself who uh, every vendor that we met with um, right at the onset, I said, accessibility is our priority. When we went on site visits to all of the um, finalists locations that we were considering for the conference, we told them we will be doing an audit, we will be prioritizing accessibility. So they knew before we even signed a contract that they needed to be on board with that and also help us carry out um, these measures and prioritizing accessibility. So we were very clear um, uh, early on and often about what we expected um, in terms of that commitment, because it couldn't just be Women Deliver. There are so many organizations, so many partners, consultants, vendors that it takes to put on this uh, conference, and everybody needed to prioritize accessibility. It couldn't just be uh, you know, one person or one person within the organization. So really mainstreaming it throughout all of our conversations, having a work plan around it, checking in um, on progress, and just um, it shows that we take it really seriously and we would need anybody that we hire or that we work with needs to take it seriously as well. Um, and honestly, everybody was very open. They saw it as this is good for their business. This is good for their business model for convenings um, that they want to attract to the country, saying that they have learned about accessibility and are prioritizing it is only going to benefit them. Thanks so much, Gretchen. Um, and we've now come to the end of our time today for today's conversation. Um, I want to thank all of our speakers and audience members, as well as our sign and Spanish English interpreters and our CART provider for contributing to the dialogue today. And also a big thank you to our co-sponsors for the event, including the Inclusive Generation Equality Collective, Women Deliver, Disability Rights Fund, Site Savers, International Disability Alliance, Association de Aid de la Educación de la Enfant Handicap, Generation Equalities Action Coalition on Feminist Movements and Leadership, CREA, and United Cities and Local Governments. What I heard today was that accessibility is a prerequisite for any disabled woman, girl, or gender diverse person to enter the feminist spaces and decision making forums that impact our rights and well being. I also heard that it is very possible that when organizers commit to access, these feminist spaces and decision making spaces can be accessible and inclusive to, to all disabled people. While we may not always get everything right, part of committing to access is coming along on a journey of accessibility and inclusion. For those who are already joining us on that journey, thank you. Accessibility is not a buzzword. It's not an optional add-on. It's a human right. If you have not yet committed to ensuring this right in your own work, we sincerely hope that you will do so today by signing on to the Feminist Accessibility Protocol. And thank you all so much for being with us today. We hope to see you again soon. Bye, everyone.